What's up, sons? It's Blind Ryan with Son of a Tech, and today we are going to take a look at none other than the latest and greatest title from Ubisoft that's due for release on February 14th. It's called For Honor, and a lot of people are excited about it. I'm excited about it, and I went ahead and got all the benchmarks you're going to need to see to pick out a graphics card to play it best on, and all of the settings and how they affect your frame rate as well, so stick around. To start things off, the test bench is actually going to be an upgraded test bench. Yes, we have moved from the i7-3770K to an i7-6700K, and it's going to be overclocked to 4.6 gigahertz at 1.35 volts, and that is mated to an MSI Z170A SLI Pro motherboard, which is kind of their budget range, with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 clocked at 2400 megahertz, and it's all powered by a Corsair AX860i, and the game will be running on a 500 gigabyte solid state drive. Of course, the next thing that we need to talk about is going to be the settings. So for the benchmarks in particular, all the settings are going to be on the high preset. The reason I like to use the presets is because they're the easiest ones to replicate and not forget any particular settings and the easiest ones for you guys to repl replicate as well to see how your current system is running the game compared to what I'm showing you here. This of course would change if those default settings enabled any sort of proprietary settings for either AMD or NVIDIA, for example HBAO+, Plus. but in this case the default for high was actually the MHBAO, is that correct? something like that. It's a new one and it just takes a kind of path of the HBAO, not that HBAO plus which is proprietary to NVIDIA. So we don't have to worry about that in this case on the presets. So that's what we'll be running in the benchmarks. But how about the settings that you want to run every day in the game? Well, I went ahead and got the percent of change for each of these settings. And this is based on averages between both an AMD RX 488 gigabyte and a GTX 1066 gigabyte. So hopping into here, you can see that the biggest change you're going to be able to get is going to be super sampling, which when it's turned off gives you an extra 228% in FPS. Of course, I just would recommend leaving it off all the time. There's not very many situations where you're going to have enough horsepower to run that and I just don't I don't think that you should have it on at all. So, provided that's off though, let's go ahead and talk about some of the other tweaks you can make. For motion blur, you're only going to see about a 4% change which is pretty minimal. For dynamic reflection that's where you're going to actually see a pretty decent bump. If you go ahead and turn those off, you can get a 40% increase. And for ambient occlusion, you have about a 15% increase as well. The rest of these kind of going down the list are pretty minuscule and aren't going to affect your frame rate anywhere noticeable. So go ahead and crank them on, do whatever you like. It's going to help your visual fidelity most likely, so go ahead and do it. Now anti-aliasing does have about a 10% change and that's from, you know, the max max setting to the completely off setting. You can obviously play around in between those and see if there's some kind of setting that you prefer there. And I hope this chart helps you guys out. If there's any changes you guys would like to see to these kind of charts and the way I'm doing these settings guides, please let me know in the comment section below. So finally, we can get down to the nuts and bolts of everything and check out how these latest and greatest graphics cards from both AMD and NVIDIA are performing in For Honor. So we're going to be taking a look at the RX 462GB, the Zotac GTX 1050, the GTX 1050 Ti, the RX 474GB, the GTX 1063GB, the RX 480 Gaming X Edition, which is an 8GB, and the GTX 1060 Superclocked, which is the 6GB. Now, just to keep this in mind guys, my inventory is always kind of rotating because I do do client builds. So I am missing that RX 464 gigabyte that I will getting be getting replaced as soon as possible. But that's just where we're going to be at for today. I apologize we're missing one there. Now as far as the upper end cards, the GTX 1070 and 1080 and the Titan just don't have any competition currently. And I don't have the 1070 or the 1080 in 
stock right now either. So I need to get those back in stock so we can do some testing. But at the same time, if we're looking at which company you need to go with, as far as the differences between how the drivers are performing for AMD or Nvidia for a particular game, you can get a good idea here. So at 1080p with the high preset enabled, we go ahead and hop in right here with the first card, which is going to be the Power Color RX 462 gigabyte. And we had a minimum FPS of 39.47 with an average of 50.92 and a max of 136.2. Six. Not too shabby and as you can see actually when you're adjusting the settings and after you've run the benchmark the game specifies that the online portion of For Honor requires a minimum of 30 FPS otherwise you will be booted from that online session. Moving up to the Zotac GTX 1050 we still stay above 30 FPS with a minimum of 46.77, an average of 61.83, and a max of 102.62. Now that's not too shabby, especially now that we're getting that 60 FPS on average. That's gonna be good for all of you guys that are in that 1080p kind of budget range. Good news for you all there. It keeps looking up with the 1050 Ti where we had a minimum FPS of 52.38 with an average of 66.66. Mmm, NVIDIA's the devil and a max of 114.46. Things aren't looking so good once we hop over to the RX 470 where we see a dip of 51.68 FPS on the minimum which actually loses out to a I guess not that much of a cheaper card anymore seeing that you can pick up this particular one for about $164 but we are losing in that minimum frame rate and I did notice some hitching which was quite frustrating but the average was admirable at 91.49 and a max of 229.8. To me this seems to be a driver optimization issue that AMD is having here. Once we get up to the GTX 1063 gigabyte we see a bump in the minimum FPS of 80.77 with an average of 99.95 and a max of 148.71. So to me it looks like the sweet spot for For Honor is going to be the EVGA GTX 1063 gigabyte and I don't have an RX 484 gigabyte but because of the VRAM and how closely it usually performs to the RX 488 gigabyte that we're going to take a look at here I would say that you're pretty solid right around that 199 to 219 dollar price range for a GPU and for honor so if we take a look at the RX 480 we see a minimum FPS of 86.06 with an average of 107.51 and a max of 181.67. Finally, we have the Big Daddy or the card that won everything out essentially with an average of 89, or sorry, with a minimum FPS of 89.39, an average of 109.65, and a max of 161.11. Now, of course, you will notice that that max FPS is lower than the RX 480, so it's safe to say that the AMD line does have enough horsepower to push through in this game however the optimizations just aren't there yet another note here is that for honor is an nvidia way it's meant to be played game so take all of these benchmarks with a grain of salt and hope that by the release on february 14th we have an official Wickle supported driver for AMD that will support for honor as well and we'll get some better numbers out of it. A couple notes on the latest non-Wickle drivers from AMD on all of the cards here that are currently tested I was getting black screens with that 17.11 and that's why the current driver that we are testing with is the official Wickle 16.12.2 driver and on the Nvidia side we had the latest Wickle driver 378.49 so in neither case did we use something that was non Wickle supported and I just wanted to clarify that for you guys 
so you know where we're at. In conclusion, I think you guys already can tell that my kind of opinion here is between the $199 and $219 range, and that's going to get you into a nice safe spot of that 1080p 60fps. And of course, if you're going to have to be choosing between AMD or Nvidia, and you're going to be playing all of your spending all of your time and playing all of the For Honor that you want to be playing, you're going to want to be on the green team this time. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below. And if you think AMD never wins on this channel, check out some more PC game performance in that playlist. And if you guys want to come to discuss it with us on the forums, we just launched sonofatech.com, which hosts all of our community forums. You can also take a look at build logs and post your own build logs and get suggestions and help on that as well. Thanks for watching. And until next time, I'll see you next Tuesday.